We've had women who, um, you know, are sat, are sat in a food bank with, you know, a tea towel between the legs. You know, we've had women who um, are using McDonald's toilet paper, anything to stem the flow, or just stay at home. It's a big taboo out there that I'm so keen to break, and I'm like, I can do it, I can talk about this. I feel confident talking about this, I don't mind talking about this, I quite enjoy it. So for me, my menstrual health education is a big part of what I do. I sellotaped a sock around my underwear just to stop the bleeding. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't get any money because my mum was a single parent and she had five mouths to feed, so there wasn't much money in the pot to be given to us. Freedom for Skills started about three and a half years ago um, when I made a few trips to Kenya in another, with another project. Um, it was a mother and baby project and I didn't really, um, I wasn't really medical so I, I couldn't really help and it, was, it really frustrated me. A colleague of mine who I work with um, through my other work, um, she rang me up and said, um, Tina, I'm working in a school and I have five girls here who, whose parents either can't afford products or um, they don't actually know that they've even started their periods um, and they've been using toilet paper and socks and things like that and I and instead of thinking oh dear what a shame there's nothing I can do it's like right okay what shall I do <laughs> I feel so passionate about it because actually it's a basic human right. You know, women and girls cannot function without safe period protection. And we can't go about our daily lives without worrying about it, without leaking. You know, we can't have a proper education if you sat there with toilet paper between your knees, you know, between your legs, and you're concentrating on, you can't concentrate on your work. You, can, you know, you're just worried about what somebody's going to say behind you. So the workshop here started round about two and, a, two, two and a half years ago. So what we do here is make, make, make washable, reusable products. We, we have these sewing workshops every week, so people can cut, sorry, every month, and people can come and help make them. And what we do is mostly send them out to, where, when I go to Kenya or uh, Victoria, my other trustee, goes to Uganda. And it's really nice for women to come together and talk periods as well. It's really nice that, that people can come and support us and they're all really, you know, and it spreads the word as well that actually it's not just here in the UK, it is worldwide. You have to think about who, who, where our market is, you know, to give them to people. Trying to dry product, you know, washable products in a, a damp flat, it's not going to work really. You know, some probably will try them, but it is really difficult because if you can't eat, you can't heat. Lincoln Green is quite a deprived area of Leeds um, and we don't do many of these but that was like an event where you know lots of families and children come together. I've given a lot of products out this afternoon you know women are coming up going oh my god you've got all ways <gasps> I can't afford those you know or um, so yeah there's a lot of need you don't realize you know and, and once one woman comes up you know you I was getting a few more and then they'd tell their friends and come up and say oh if you got can I have a pro you know you sort of like you know, can I have some products, is that okay? We do a lot of deliveries and it's mostly to women's groups. 
But if you think you, you have a, a mum with two daughters who are teenagers, how much that costs every month. If you're on a low income, you know, we're talking about the working poor here, not people on, you know, like, um, unemployment benefit or things like that. People are using washing up liquid to wash their hair, wash their clothes, you know, wash the floors, wash the dishes. We've had women who are using McDonald's toilet paper. We've had ladies who um, in, go to community centres and use the green paper towels, old t-shirts, you know, anything to stem the flow, or just stay at home. People don't even, they can't think that people have not got 50 pence, you know, for, you know, a, a packet, you know, well, they're only, you know, they're only 50p in, you know, in supermarkets, but, you know, if you've down to your last 50p, do you actually buy the products or do you buy a loaf of bread? I think products should be cheaper or, sh or should be accessible to everybody. You know, we should have them in toilets, like we've got toilet paper. We should have them in places of work. You know, we should be a period-friendly country, period-friendly friendly businesses, you know, schools where you can, you know, it's not an, an issue that you, you need a product. I'd always been the person at school that people went to when they had worries about their period, about sex, all that stuff which I always found bizarre because I was like the least likely person in my class to be having sex, but I was the one they were asking about contraception and all that stuff. I always had a very positive view of periods, I was always very comfortable talking about them. I was ecstatic to get my period. I had to wait till I was 14 to start, so I, was, I think I was the last person in my class and I was like, yes, it's here. I was very, very sick with what we now know as Lyme disease, but we didn't know it at the time. Um, and I was pretty much housebound and bedbound back then. Um, and I discovered that having my period while I was really, really sick was just awful. It was uncomfortable, it was sweaty, it was itchy, it was horrible. And this is how I originally discovered the reusable menstrual products. I just felt I could really improve them because I knew how to sew. I just took my parents' um, dining room table, turned it into my sewing station, borrowed my mum's sewing machine and started making them. From there and that was really how the business sort of started with me making them and I think and I wanted to run a business so everything just sort of came together at the right time and it was like this is what I'm meant to do. My mission with Precious Stars um, is, is to make periods eco-friendly and fun so as you can see here we've got some of, some of the prints that we've currently just got in I think this one we had a competition for these actually and I think this one was called Blown Away this one got named Aloha but the idea is to make them really fun and seem friendly particularly for younger um, teens who are starting their periods, for whom it can be quite scary, I think, to start your period. So having something that's so colourful um, just can change that because you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, which pad am I going to wear? Do I feel like, you know, this pink one? Do I feel like a blue one? Do I feel like penguins? You know, so that's one of the main things that we're keen to do is just make periods much more fun and comfortable for everyone. The process of making a cloth pad is, it's actually quite simple. You find the, the fabric that you want. You stitch the core, the absorbent part, to the top layer. Then we stitch the top layer, um, right side to right, right sides against each other, to the bottom layer. And then we leave a hole so we can flip them out. And then we top stitch around it. And then we add on the poppers. And the factory would have already added on the label before this. And that's pretty much it. You're ready to go, you wash it, and then you're ready to wear them. I saw this gap in the market. I thought, you know what, there's so much, you know, good stuff to talk about with these products that I think I could start a channel just talking about them. Today is day 33 of my cycle, so I do get my period today. I'll have had a 32 day cycle, which is not, um, I've had that before, but it's been quite. And I think in the first year I got about a thousand subscribers and then it just snowballed from there to, well, I think we have 127,000 today. So it's just, it's really grown and it just shows people want to know about these, these issues. I, I really hope that the videos do let other girls and, and anyone that menstruates actually feel more confident talking about periods because it's a natural part of life and that was one of the things I really wanted to do with it because at school we were quite happy to talk to each other about oh I've got my period can I borrow a tampon or stuff but even I remember starting one day and I hadn't it was the day that Carol service at our schools so we didn't bring our school bags in 
Um, and of course, I always had a pad in my school bag. And I remember asking one friend, and I was like, do you have a pad? But whispering. And she was like, oh, no, I don't. But you know, you could go ask the office, because they're really nice. And I knew that logically, but I just didn't want to go into the office and ask, have you got a pad? I was walking down there going, Bryony, this is ridiculous. It's a period. Why do you feel this way? But still now I remember how I felt there and I'm like, I don't want other people to feel this way. I want it to be so normal that you're just like, ugh, oh, period. Anyone got a pad? Anyone got a tampon? Anyone got a cup? I don't know what, well, not a cup, but you know, just feels so much more confident voicing the fact that they had their period. So for me, it's about making these things normal make, and being like the older sister to these people. And if I use frank language, like say vagina, periods, uterus, and say, hey, it's not a swear word, it's not a rude word, you have to giggle, I can say it perfectly seriously, this is just what it's called. Then other girls and, and boys will take that on and realise, actually, it's okay to talk about this. So you have a big impact, and I think you have more of an impact than you think with YouTube. I do really think it has given people uh, an open area if they've got any issues to ask that, and it makes things much less scary. I get a lot of really lovely messages from people saying, thank you so much for this information, it kind of changed my life. Um, I never realised that my period could be comfortable or pain free or all these sorts of things. It's really lovely to see and it really does encourage me to keep going. We've seen very recently much more awareness about the pink tax, you know, that, that women get taxed for our products like shaving, razors, all this sort of stuff. So that there's things that we're, t we're taxed about because we don't talk about it. We don't make enough noise when these issues are happening. So for me, I think Yes, there's definitely, it's got better. It's got so much better. I'm seeing things all the time now in newspapers and articles and online, talking about periods and talking about these, these sort of products. But there's still that stigma there. There's still those people who are like, oh, it's periods, we shouldn't talk about this and we should be quiet. And I'm like, nope, nope, we shouldn't. There's too many issues that go on. There's misogyny across the whole area around menstruation. The universal credit system is a little bit broken. I think we need to reform, you know, the actual in-work benefit system. It's a new thing, you know, I think, well, it's not a new thing, it's an old thing. But as in thinking about what we need to be doing about it more, about, you know, how us as women need to, you know, I suppose, grab the moment and say, right, this is what we need to do about it. We need products, you know, we can't function without them. Make them accessible, make them, you know, cheap enough for everybody to, ha you know, to be able to use them. My, my goal of Pressure Stars, as I said before, is to make periods fun and eco-friendly. And I really want to get that message out to more people. We're currently kind of working at the moment on planning out the, the future of what we want Pressure Stars to be. I'm kind of in the, in the process of switching it from just a transactional company that sells products to being transformational, um, where I wanted to actually be making a difference. So the products we sell, not only are they making a difference to people that buy them, but hopefully we're going to have like a donation system set up and everything so that we're actually going to be giving back to the community because that's really important to me.